Thank you, uh, Program Director. To the Berif family, Mrs. Lungi and uh, the beloved ones around you, to the only daughter of Ted Dimitri, Andrea Theodore, may you all draw salaries as family from the knowledge that from the testimony of all the speakers and the people around here in this hall and around South Africa, football lovers, draw solace from the knowledge that you are not alone in this time of bereavement. To the football leadership, South African Football Association, led by Natasha Chiklas and the CEO of SAFA and all executive members of SAFA present here today. To the leadership of the PSL, represented by Professor Sloss and the entire leadership board members of the professional Soccer League in South Africa. The leadership of the clubs that Ted Dumitru coached in South Africa, <coughs> Kaiser Chiefs Football Club, Orlando Pirates Football Club, Mamilori Sundowns Football Club, and our leader and legend of all times, Mr. Kaiser Mdaw, decorated by history in playing football and bestowed on him as one individual who came from our shores as the most prolific individual here in South Africa and abroad. <laughs> Upcoming coaches, past and present, who some of you were discovered by Ted to me too. Keep going, because that is what is the demand of you to succeed. Players, past and present, you are the jewel of football, and you are an important ingredient of what make us at the end of the day talk about soccer and football. You are the talent, you are the future. You are the people who take us to the stadiums. You are the defining sons of what make this country South Africa tick. To football lovers, fans, including ourselves. At the end of the day, everything else is narrowed to a fan. In football and in sport in general, we don't talk about a moment of glory. We talk about supporters and fans. If you're a sport lover, if you're a football lover, there is something somewhere that makes your heart to beat. <coughs> May it be a club, May it be a player, may it be a coach. And you are the ones at the end of the day that make football to be colorful. Without you, there is no voice. Without you, football and the sport in general is not colorful. We say to you all, great people of football in South Africa and the world over. As government, on behalf of the President of the Republic, we extend our heartfelt condolences. Death do not be proud. But at the end of the day, 
death is our destiny. The question we must answer and ask in life, what purpose do you serve? So when you pass on, history will either reward and remember you for what you did for humankind. And when we ask and answer that question today about Ted Dimitri, with the tears falling, we define this moment as a moment of celebration. Precisely because of what Ted Dimitri was to us and to humanity. He did his best to share what he was with the rest of us. He was a genius. Genius is not just a terminology. Genius is an outstanding character that irrespective of academic support or record that you have accumulated, your standing out is what you are born with, is God given. Nobody can take it away from you. It's not defined by how many qualifications you have accumulated. It's just that God has given us you simply because you are this person from the womb of your mother. You were just born genius. He was not an intellectual, he was a genius per excellence. Some define him as a perfectionist. And this is what he was. He was a doyen because he shared his life with humanity, not with his own family. Ted Dimitri, I dare say, he was the Che Guevara of football. Che Guevara was born in Argentina, but died somewhere not where he was born. He fought battles and won freedom for the people of Cuba. When you go to Cuba, you think that he was born there. He died in Bolivia. He fought battles in Africa, in Tanzania, and now what is referred to to the Great Lakes region, the TRC. He trained some of our finest combatants of our liberation struggle. He planted the seed of liberation and the fight against colonialism in the African continent and left to pursue the struggle in Bolivia. And Che Guevara used to say, when somebody shouted among the crowd after freedom in Havana in Cuba, you are my family because I'm too, my surname is Che Guevara. And Che Guevara said that if your veins and your heartbeat feels deep about an injustice meted against an individual, you are my comrade and my friend. Ted Dimitri was born in Romania, so it is said, in Bucharest qualified. He left his country not by his desire, but by his political beliefs in the then Eastern Europe. In the political and ideological altercation with the communist government, because he felt deep about an injustice meted by those who were in power, whether they were communists or what, against his own people. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison before he left for the United States to pursue his football career. But he died in the African continent. So it is said he planted the seeds of football development and pursuance in the Republic of Zambia. 1982. He coached the Zambian national team. Who can forget the talented 
Zambian national team. In 1982, we were toiling and fighting for liberation in South Africa. He went to coach in Swaziland, so he set and then came to South Africa. Thanks to the legends like Kaiser Mdau, who brought him to the Republic of South Africa to come and share some of his skills with the rest of the South African people. You draw the comparisons. He died in Africa, in a country called South Africa. But he was not born here. He fell deep and he was in solidarity with the rest of humanity to share what he has accumulated in Eastern Europe in his early days with the rest of humanity. He produced and at the same time planted the seed of among us to make us succeed as a nation. So I dare say that he is the Czech of our of football. For history will remember him and reward him handsomely. Human dignity is bestowed upon, upon nations simply because of the deeds of individuals. In Czech Dimitri's veins run deep the values of the triumph of human spirit and the conquer of human dignity in many ways. He shared his talent, his knowledge, his <coughs> many of He spoke here today about what he did for South Africa. For us who are still alive, how do we want to remember Ted Dimitri? He is no more, but his life will continue to be an inspiration to us. Yet the moment and time for us to pass on can never be defined, be defined by anybody. It can happen at any time. But for me, the story that we are told is that maximize on what you want to achieve whilst you are still alive. Even if the mortal beings cannot bestow upon you an award of excellence, but history will remember you. Ted Dumitru, as we speak today, says to us from his soul and the depth of his soul, stand up and do something for your country and for human life and dignity. And such, that is how we'll thrive as human beings. Football has evolved over a period of time. You can no longer throw bones about how you need to coach. Throw bones like going to the wish doctor, which is part, by the way, of our philosophy and science to predict whether you will win or not. But the wish doctor can only help you and imbue you with the spirit of succeeding. The rest is upon you. You can no longer say that no, we won or were defeated because the good doctor said that and we did not do certain things. The combination of that African scientific science of the wish doctor and what you accumulate in terms of knowledge capacity and understanding where you are going, the combination of those are not mutually exclusive. That's what makes you to succeed. We go to church and pray because we want to succeed. But they say that God help us all. But because we pray and we've got a spirit in us and the belief that we can succeed, and that is why we pray even before we win or go into victory. That is what comes with us. But over and above that, we've got our energy. We've got everything with us in order to succeed. So football has evolved. It is analyzed with the introduction of the technological highway through globalization that you can measure a speed of a human being, not only from the naked eyes, but 
from a scientific point of view to know that the capacity of a player to run, how many minutes, that can be measured. It's no longer generalization. Look at Mbalula, he looks fit. He can play for 90 minutes, fill them. You must know the strength of your player in terms of what he can deliver based on the scientific outlook. And that technology has come in handy for us to understand where we are going. We can no longer generalize. Nothing is static in life. Like football, it is not static. It has actually evolved. Knowledge accumulation and the necessary tools of analysis of being empowered and understanding where we are going and what needs to be done is an important ingredient of what must inform us. We will not succeed as a nation if we don't have academies. We will not succeed as a nation if we don't invest in development. It's basic knowledge that can be shared by anybody. We will not succeed if we don't play football from rudimentary level and empower youngsters. Science say to us in terms of research through Mapungugwe and to Dimitri was the lecturer of that. Well-educated round of person who understood this quite correctly. Most of the kids at an early age who play football between the ages of 10 and 15 have not seen a doctor in their life. That's why when he's 30 years still playing football, he's got problems of Aki Hills tendons, injuries and all of that, because that was not properly guided through nutrition and all others, whilst the child was still at an early age. Leave alone the fact that people fix their age because they were not given an opportunity. And a youngster is discovered at the age of 20, and he says that I'm 18. Everybody loves a, a footballer who's 18 and prolific, because that is an investment to the future. But it is, it is distorted when he says that he's 20, when he's supposed to be 30. And because we don't have academies, we don't have doctors, these children, some of them come straight from high school because of their talent into the national team and not properly assessed. Such then kills what must happen in the evolution of football. Every team in the PSL must have an academy and development. And SAFA itself must preoccupy itself with football development from all ages. In what is called in economic terms, talent incubation. If the under 23 does not function, and the under 17 do not function, and the under 13 do not function, you don't have a system for football development. When I grew up and played football, they used to call it B.A. C-Line. I started at C-Line to play football. And that time we were not empowered as we are. <coughs> All teams used to, they, to, to know that. And then in your graduation, it is based on your talent that you graduate to the first team. That's what used to happen. And even now it is happening. And even now, in terms of the size of football, it has given us magnificent results. I remember a team called Asad Mimosa from Abiga. They once played in a competition of care and brought entirely their youth side. Those guys were outstanding in terms of their football. And if you look at the youngsters now who play for the national team, and some of them passed on from our teams, case the Chiefs, of the Pirates, and all of that, is all the work of development. And if that is not consolidated into academies, 
in the context of Sava, there is no basis for us to preach what happened to football, what will happen in the future. Ted Pemilkin talked about philosophy. Philosophy is nothing else. It's a way of life. Don't complicate it and go to a big dictionary and think about what is philosophy. It is a way of life. It is a culture. What is your culture? Your culture is a culture of dripping. You are, you, you are like South America. That's who we are. Europeans can't, can't drink when they can't dance. You go to a club with a European, he dances this direction and misses the beat. <laughs> you play with an European in football, look at it in England. That's not our football. Long balls, all of that boring stuff. But look at Barcelona, it's magic. And I don't want to talk about South Africa, which magic is there. <laughs> But you can only see it with results, people who see it. Right? And that is it. But I don't want to talk about Paris and Kaiser Chiefs. There's one person who used to coin a term and said piano and susha. It was wonderful football. Scrimmachala. Who? Some of us who are young stars, that's what we used to do. To see. What Rafale does of running over the football. We miss those days of Tomosol. When the first time with my naked eyes I saw a human being on top of a round football, it was Tomosol. And I don't talk about the age of older people before me. But that was our football. But football then did not mean dribbling backwards and pleasing the crowd. Being prolific today means dribbling and scoring goals. That's why Messi is the Ballon d'Or of the year after year because he dribbles going forward, it's not going backwards. Now, all of those things, we people who go to the stadium who are fans, we want to see, but the practitioners who are football lovers put it together and say that, yes, you want to see this, that is nice, but me, I must win in order for my team to stay on top. So the philosophy of football is our way of life. Can we preserve it? Our league is the best. It's competing with the best in the world, PSL. The visionary leadership of people like Kaiser Mutawu to think today that we've got a PSL will attract foreign nationals in our league. I don't have any regard for any PSL club. That buys mediocrity outside South Africa. I, I, you must know Mbaluga doesn't respect you. Why would you bring us a, a, a Don Lolo yet in the country? <laughs> the players which PSL clubs have bought outside the country have brought competition. Mesuma is the top goal scorer in 2016. 18 goals or so. That's what we must bring to our league. Competition. And bring these players that we've seen over the years who made us to celebrate. So that's how our league should be like. But don't bring us people who will basically bring a difference. Like when people buy players in South Africa to go and play in Europe, they buy people who are going to bring a difference. There is something about an African player. And the reason why we're not going to win the World Cup as Africans is because all Africans have naturalized in Europe. He was Senegal, now he's living in Belgium. He's living in France. When France won the World Cup, Mourinho said Africa has won the World Cup. So all our players leave our shores, they get naturalized in European countries. And they are the best of the best in that league. We draw all Africans in the English Premier League. England doesn't win anything. It gets beaten. Even if football was discovered by the English, but today they can't tell us anything. They have not won even a single World Cup. So you then begin to see out of them that who makes the league tick largely in percentages, it is the Africans. So Africa, endurance, stamina, talent, even those players who come from Africa and trained in the best academies in Europe, 
and end up being naturalized, it is precisely because of the fact that we are born with food. You can go to the DRC, you can go to Burundi, the president of Burundi plays football. And you can go anywhere, football is part of us. So when you say, I look at minority uh, codes and not focus on football, my belief is that football people are alive to discuss it. And I've said to Safa, we have agreed to with Safa long time ago. And I'm repeating it today on the memorial of Ted Tumit. We need a football academy. We've got the resources from FIFA, not the 10 million that we gave to the Caribbean. <laughs> the ones that is left with us, Mr. Dennis Mum. The money that we have, we have the money. Before that money finishes, and nobody can explain what happened to that money, let's have something symbolic that there was a World Cup in South Africa, and it left us a, 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 a legacy of a football academy. Who you name that academy after, it's up to you. I've, 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 I've stopped coming to funerals and naming things after football people, you fight a lot. I come here and say this thing will be named after Ted Dimitri. Hey, money didn't consult with us. So I stopped it. I leave it to football people before I'm accused of government interference. So I leave it to you. So I'm just saying, we have agreed with SAF. Let's have an academy of football. It's a legacy. And get the best coaches. In that academy, you do coaching and then you empower our own coaches. Yeah, they get coached in that academy. Two, you train these youngsters. Because you know there's a shortage of strikers and all of that. Today we repeat one and the same song after every death. Stephen Pinar was produced by excellence. Uh, whoever was produced by this. What do we have? What do you expect of us? What will happen to us in the future? We don't have a strong incubation of development. Where in which we employ the best people in the academy? If we want to do research and want to understand the state of football, what is the university of football in South Africa? Where do we go? Where do scholars and kids who study sports science about football go to study? and look at the practicalities. Where do we discover these kids that they distort their age? And how do we remedy that situation? Not all kids who have gone through that academy will be everywhere, but it will intervene. And we have agreed with Safa about that. And the second point is women football, that everybody cries for that. That is important. Because we need to take our girls along in terms of football development. That's why Banyana Banyana players play up until, you know, whatever. There's no competition, there's no league. I'm guaranteed that even if I don't go to training for five days, I will be selected. And we've got the best talent of young girls coming through. So we need a girls' women league going. I'm not saying Branke. PSL must do that. I'm saying Safa must do that working with PSL. Maybe Kaiser Chiefs Football Club, Orlando Pirates. Mami Lodi Sundowns does have that. I can see Bob State is not happy about what I'm saying <laughs> or what I'm about to say. And I think that we can do that. And Safa invest in that particular league. And that is the legacy. And I want to salute all the clubs with the multi choice disky challenge that we have now through PSL. A lot of initiatives have actually been invested in football development because players who sit in the bench don't play. But Disky Challenge have made a great intervention. And we've got talent here in South Africa. There is no doubt about it. Let's all make a contribution. And take to me to leave us with that, with that legacy.
to understand that football has evolved. There is nothing in human life that is static, that is standing in one place. Things evolved over time. And that is it. What was happening in the 50s and the 80s is not the case now. For players and clubs to succeed, they employ new tools of, 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 of analysis and empowerment. And I think clubs also have been brave enough to employ South African coaches to coach our teams in the PSL. And I think most of the clubs have invested in their coaches. And we also need to talk to football fans. Your impatience with clubs is what brings us to search in terms of success. Peter Musimani is the second South African African coach to win big in the PSL. And others can. But their, their life was cut short by supporters. Because you interfere a lot. Even myself, I'm a fan. I also expel coaches at night, you don't know. <laughs> And that time we will lose really. So we will not. No, no. We are always bad. Bad is not a good coach. My no other my channel our feta. I mean I. And then from there, came over. The same thing to Musiman who won today. They said no, he must go. I don't know whether Nyana was there to take him out in some of the games and spot him out. But he has won the league. Nothing will win over one single season and then you say that we have achieved the results that goes even for the national team i would have maintained 10 to me too as coach of bafana Bafana. but i think he also left because of stress he has won he has not delivered hey these people can talk on radio and they can analyze they are experts in no time, there is, a, there is a campaign, the coach must go. Leave the coach. When the five years of the coach that we have given him, he has not delivered. Even if Sikiwe, just show him. See, There's no way you can employ Sheikh Mashaba for five years because he has not achieved the results for AFCON. You demand that he must go. And uh, you have seen many mistakes in him. All the time when he goes to the press conference, he's no longer analyzing football, he's defending himself like a politician. <laughs> Leave politics to us and coaching to coaches. I'm a politician, I've got many views about life. Distorted and all of that campaign, it's elections now. Everybody has got an opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I need to deliver him, man. And he says, football is not like that. It's not like that. You've got an opinion why the coach replaces a defender with a midfielder. Was he? Yeah. Then when you have sat down and made a proper evaluation, you yourself as management, as SAFA, I hear all the time SAFA is on the technical committee, but that technical committee is always established to expel people. You know that somebody is not going to come back. Once they say there is a Natasha Chiklas technical committee, don't think you'll come back. You are gone. <laughs> what? So, the technical committee must come in to assist us. The long and short, when I conclude, we must have structures. And let us not say we don't have money to create structures. What is my role as government? My role as government is to make school sport work. That's my job. Every school must play. That's my job. My job is not to give money to SAFA. I do give them a little bit of money. <laughs> but it's, it's not a lot of money. My job is to invest in schools. Let me tell you why we've got a problem with schools. The Department of Education, Basic Education, has not embraced fully the idea of the school sport. 
who have sorted that out. Let me tell you, during the times of apartheid, there was a department called Department of Education and Training, dead. Those people who are old, they know that. Department of Bank Education. But one thing they delivered was to ensure that there is sport every Wednesday, and then there is, there is, there is sport predominantly it was football. But we never played rugby predominantly. It's not that we don't know it. But cricket and netball, that was our sport. And then on Wednesday, we'll go watch our heroes and then uh, watch our school being beaten or winning competitions. When the schools reopened, that is what was to happen. But that was imposed on the schools. And all teachers in every school will have a teacher who's responsible for sport. That died over time. That's why you go to a school, you meet a school principal, and he tells you, we don't play. Now, if you understand school sport, it was a beehive of activity for everybody. And now what has happened is that we separated physical education out of the school syllabus and never integrated. But now we are agreed in terms of norms and standards to implement physical education. Because that's where clubs and everybody else go to scout talent. That they would simply invest a lot in terms of school sport. And SAFA must all equally invest in school sport through football, because that's where talent comes from. But government must lead, open up the schools, allow kids to play. So I'm not coming here to you to say to you, government doesn't have its share of blame for not implementing school sport. We do. And I can tell you that the inadequacies of us failing to implement has actually undermined the agenda of development of sport in our schools. And that is why my department is focused on that job. And with the Department of Basic Education, beyond our memorandum of understanding, to implement the school sport program. I'm talking about this because the person we are about here today if he were to give us a lecture, he was going, in terms of that philosophy, talk about the necessary point of delivery of sport and football being the school. There's nobody who was di discovered anywhere in terms of football. That's why most of football players are disadvantaged in the background, because that's the sport we play. And that's the sport that is popular, that makes South Africa to come to a standstill. But we will not achieve if our structures are not intact and are not servicing what we want to achieve, being a winning nation. And that's what is important. The ultimate result for South Africa in football is a winning nation. And that's what is important. And I think we can do a lot if we work together. We've got talent, talented coaches, all of them. But coaching is not what you experienced when you were still a player. It's what you will accumulate through training. Because you are advantaged by the fact that you played the sport. But you need a knowledge accumulation. I was very impressed with Benny McCarthy. I met him in Scotland when he went to train and become a coach. Because it didn't simply end with the fact that I was the best for Pirates. I was the best for Ajax, I was the best in Europe, I was the best in England. But he was forced to go and get his license. And some farmers assist us to train our coaches with regard to that knowledge accumulation. And many of our stars are qualified to become coaches. In the English Premier League, to become a coach, it is standard you must be at a particular level. You don't just come in. But I, can, I recognize if you can do that braque in the PSL, A, there will be trouble. So 
I think what we need to emphasize is the fact that knowledge accumulation, not only academic record to empower our coaches, is going to be important, especially former football stars. When you meet them, you ask them, what happened to you? Uh, what are you doing? Peter, before he left for Sunhouse, he developed a manual for us in the department of uh, school sport. I don't know whether he finished that. But he dedicated his time so that we use that manual in our school sport program to develop uh, football in the schools. And if I had enough money, including the one that is at Loto, I will employ everybody to go and teach kids football. I don't have money but we work it any that. But that's what we want. We want to tap in the resources of these ex footballers. First they must be trained by force. Compulsory. Yes, already in order say football. We know that you used to score goals, but they must get coaching licenses. And I want Safa to trace all of them. Not when they are 80 or uh, when they are 70 years. Once you finish football, just be concerned. Jimmy Dow, you are a commentator in Batu Nemali, but football, what do you do? You see, we follow them up, we empower them with football skills, we give them the coaching licenses, and that is what must happen going forward. My last point, really the last one. I've never spoken so long in a funeral. But Ted Kimintu was a gift to us. God gave him. And he played his part, and he was very, very, very much enlightened. Well educated individual. And I think I'm very happy that today, standing here, Safa did not put the blind eye to that. He passed on on his way, as always, to pass on knowledge to others. The MC spoke about what they did for Botswana. But I can tell you, there are many tech Dimitris in our midst. And let us not put a blind eye. Safka, what I've learned about and what we do, training coaches and all of that is very important. Because it is important to pay attention to the knowledge capacity of our coaches. That's how the philosophy of the South African football is going to be enhanced and implemented. Not from theory, but from practice. I feel passionate about football because football is the number one sport. And you will know that today, as I'm speaking to you, we are not in a good space. In the African continent and the world over. Leave my outburst about a bunch of losers, which I don't regret anyway, but that was an outburst of a fan. You know, when a fan is angry, the minister is a fan. I am a fan. So I'm also allowed to express my emotions. But my emotions don't only end up with that, they go beyond it. And I think that we got to implement the basic tenets of what we want to achieve. And I'm looking forward because the plans are there. The biggest academy, not only in South Africa, in the African continent, must be unveiled by South Africa to train our youngsters and give them hope in terms of what they must achieve. And I think we can achieve that in memory of Ted Dimitri and many who have dedicated their lives to the sport uh, of football. Safa can do it alone, PSL can do it alone. We can only do it if we work together. And government also coming to support food development structures across the country to take football forward. Ted Dimitri, rest in peace. Ours is about memory against forgetting. We will remember everything good that you have done for us and will cherish it for the rest of our lives. We will always become a point of reference when we replenish and even increase our intellectual capacity about where we can take football. 
But death shouldn't be proud, for we know that we will pick up the spear and keep on fighting. Let us make South Africa a great country to live in through football. And many, many, many regards to those who dedicate their lives to make the people's sport of football and soccer to become the greatest and opening up opportunities for many of our youngsters to succeed. I humbly thank the family and SAFA for giving us as government the opportunity to share our thoughts on this last moment of paying tribute to one of the finest sons that has been produced by humanity, who have shared everything that he had with the world. And I dare say that Dumitru was indeed an internationalist that will share his life with the rest of the people in the globe. Thank you very much and thank you. The struggle continues.